Okay, my friends, about a year or so ago, um, a NASA put out their moon rock samples. Well, I have the exact same rocks here, identical, because everybody has them. They, there is nothing but biology. That's a lung. That is a lung. That came from the moon. That came from the earth. They're now talking about, oh, we found rust on the moon. Well, guess what? Rust is inside of lungs because lungs contain blood. Blood contains iron. Iron it turns into rust. They're talking about hematite being absolutely amazing to be able to find it on the moon. Hematite is from blood. Okay, my friends, it doesn't get any stranger than this. I started as a complete, total material scientist. Quantum mechanics, electronics, electrons, all that stuff. It led me to uh, finding mud fossils and understanding that how they transfer. I understand the chemistry and I understand the atomic theory behind this whole thing and it ends up being an electron flood. Changes all of atomic theory, which they know it had to change, but they couldn't figure out that everything is made of electrons. Electrons are dipoles. Anyway, it just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper and I started to realize once I knew that the giants were real, because I have them, I have them DNA tested, and it's all 100%, no question. We've got giants that are so huge, and then there's dragons, absolutely no question. In Morocco, just go on Google Earth, go on top of Morocco, and look, and you, right below Morocco, you see a giant fish, and right above that, you're going to see a giant dragon attacking the fish. I've shown it a million times. Now, that gives us ancient histories, ancient mysteries. And then I realized Enoch, who everybody thought was just an insane old crazy guy, he appeared to be telling the truth about going to heaven and meeting God, and God telling him all these things. And, about, and he talked about the giants and how they destroyed the earth, and there was going to be a giant flood. He was Noah's great-grandfather. So he was, before Noah, he told me, yeah, they, they drowned all these giants. They screwed up. They did what they shouldn't do. We're going to put them in hell. We're going to do all these things. And there's all these crazy Gregories and all these unbelievable monsters and dragons and demons. And all these things were real. That's, I, I'm just telling you, that's what I have determined. Now, you could go any way you want with this. But I'm going to show you what... I have determined, and one of the things that God told Enoch was that the earth is going to last 7,000 years. And I have a feeling right now, and I'm going to tell you why, because of electron flood theory, because of the way we're scrubbing through the universe and the atmosphere, because of the Schumann frequencies, because of the, the extreme temperature fluctuations, and it's not going to fluctuate, it's going to just increase. And I can tell you why, it's because of overcharging, and I can tell you why the overcharging is happening. And I don't know if there's anything we can do about it. So it's not going to be good news today. But if you want to stay tuned, stay tuned. Now, everybody knows me, knows that all, all the things I'm talking about, I've had DNA certified and so forth. I'm not just guessing. And I have giants, huge giants. And I have human lungs. I have human fingertips that are from giant giants. And we have other ones that are even bigger than that. And this was all PCR DNA tested. This was no simple, easy, quick test. And uh, it was done in extremely excellent conditions. And the DNA was dense. It came right out of the arterial blood supplies. And they were homo sapien, uh, homo sapien mitochondrial, cytochrome B, and D-loop region. Uh, that's all we tested for, just to be sure that I, uh, what I was saying was right. And these rocks like this right here, hold on. You say, oh, that's just a rock. No, it isn't. That's a giant's human fingertip. And it has been tested, DNA certified, CAT scan, anatomist, microscopy, 100% certain. So is this. So is this lung right here. That's one of the things that it was also DNA, CAT, uh, t well, CAT scan, DNA tested, certified anatomist, everything. They all seemed to have come out from the Great Flood uh, and they had been soaked in a salty-ish water for a long period of time and then when they um, they were flushed apparently with some clean water to take the salt out of it and at that point they just dried out and became solid 
like this, a new species called notos. We have these in copious quantities. That's where the fibula bone came down and the tibia, with the big bone, was resting there. And these have the toes built into them. We have these in huge quantities. And uh, what we've been told is just not right. And they don't understand the process of these these creatures and their body parts, like this goose, this, this head and the feathers and everything, have turned into stone because there's a process called nucleophilic invasion. Just look it up. It's, it's, it's a replacement of what was here by other atoms that want to invade this and stabilize this. And this is all part of electron flood theory as well. It all fits together. And you have to start by understanding that the atomic model doesn't work and it never has worked. And they admit it doesn't work. They just don't know what to do about it. Well, I figured out that the atomic nucleus of every atom is nothing more than a collection of electrons. And electrons are dipoles. They have a positive and a negative, but one side is extremely strong and the other side is extremely weak. And one side concusses and one side does not. The one side that does not is literally gravity. It holds things together loosely. Oh, come on, everybody hang together. Stay with me. And they do. And when they collect like this, in this form, they're photons. And when they're half of one of these, like that, they're electrons. These try to fuse into things. These cook and burn and heat. These bounce and make light. We've got a lot of thinking to do, and I, I understand the rocks now better than they do. So if you want to call, get a hold of me, NASA, I would say get a hold of me and we can look at your rocks and see what they're like for reality. Not just guesses and saying, oh, it can't possibly be this, it can't possibly be that. Because let me show you what's on Comet 67P, or in actuality, what Comet 67P is. Okay, that's Comet 67P. Well, it's, it's essentially Comet 67P. That's an Achilles tendon. That is the tendinous fibrils, and then there's little bundles of muscle, very small bundles of muscle also going along that. Now, let's see what Comet 67P looks like. All right, this also could be basically what 67P is. There's the tendon ball, and then it comes up to a stalk, and there's abrupt transitions. And in addition, there'll be little muscular fibers that are there that are the straps. So it could be that, you know, 67P. Now, I don't want you to get confused. The tendon ball that we're looking at in outer space, comma 67P, I believe is an Achilles tendon. It could be one of these kind of balls, because they come this big. On Earth, they're gi gigantic, and there's hundreds of them in, in areas, just hundreds of them laying around in areas, and they are the anchors of all of these tendon straps. And, I mean, they're just everywhere. And there's, the Earth is covered with gigantic, gigantic, gigantic creatures. These kind of little balls in us you can't even see. In, on Earth, some of them are bigger than houses big houses, mansions. Now that's 67P, and I believe this is the Achilles tendon, the anchor part. This is those straps that come up, which are the tendon straps. This is one of the muscle fiber bundles. Get any anatomist that understands the mus muscles and tendon structure of the foot. This is what they are. And in addition, there's going to be all kinds of little blood vessels that are in here that service it with blood. And they're little round tubes. And those are what make the comas. By the way, before we get out of here, this is all ferrous oxides. And they did test this. The Philae Lander had a, a little robotic thing that tested these molecules. And they are all of the building blocks of life. They know that. They said it's all 100% it's all organic. They're ferrous oxides, you know, and, and um, hydrocarbons. It's, it's, it's exactly identical, identical to what life is. Identical, no difference. And additionally, the astronauts say they go, they will go on their spacewalks. When they come back in, their suits smell like steak. And here's why. <laughs> here it is. That, those, are, those things shooting out of here. 
those are boiled gases that are from blood vessels. The blood vessels inside, and I'll show them to you. I have some, because they landed right on here and they took pictures looking right into them. And the little blood vessels, the vascular parts, they call them dragon balls because they're actually bleeding blood out. And that blood is what's boiling. And, see, and, and the space um, uh, astronauts, when they go out on the spacewalks, they come back in, they say the suits smell like steak. And it's because it's uncombusted gases. If there was oxygen out there, you'd see these burning just like off of your gas grill. You see that? That's exactly the same things that are happening on Earth. We have these perfectly round sinkholes because this was a blood vessel. That's on Comet 67P. These little balls are the holes where blood comes out. And inside of these, like, I can show you the exact same thing inside of, of, of the mud fossils that I have here. There is no difference whatsoever and the chemistry is the same. The gases are coming out of here are exactly identical to, to, to life because they are. That's what that thing was. I can't explain how this could have happened, how gigantic these things are because this is 40 meters wide, this wide. This is a couple hundred feet across. And the same things happen in Russia, and I talked to the Russians about this, and they have the same thing. They have, they have a, a lung up there in, um, I forget the name of the place, um, Kamchatka, I can't remember what it was. But um, and they're having all these sinkholes come in because we are nothing but biology here. Comets are biology, moons are biology. Well, I'll show you. All right, this was an article about these big stone balls, and they're all over the place, and that's got a stalk that ran into it, just like I showed you before at some point. These are the stone balls that are from skin, and that had all kind of little tiny fibers run into every one of those, and that stuff eroded away and turned into mud and left these balls. They call them concretions. They're not concretions. Those are interstitial balls. And Gil Headley and I discovered those. I discovered them, and I called and got a hold of Gil Headley, who was an anatomist, and I said, what the heck is going on inside of these mud fossils, all these little balls? And after a while, we worked on it. This goes back 2012, 13, 14, somewhere in that area. And, um, and we discovered that they were these, this particular layer that coats everything that separates everything else, membranes, skin, tissue layers, fascia, everything that's separated from anything else has to have a layer of this interstitial. And and now they, 2015, they said, oh wow, we just discovered this. We missed it all this forever since history started up till 2015. Well, Gil Edley and I re realized it 2013, 2014. I started posting about it and then they discovered it. All right, here it is right here. See, those are the balls. And, the, and when all this other stuff, this is the fluidy, gooey stuff that can let your skin pull this way and that way and do this and that. This is right underneath the skin layers. But it, this is on every, every place in the body that separates. This is, on, this is a bone. And this is the skin of the bone. It's called a periosteum. It's a, it's a fabric that coats the bone, separates it from the, the flesh. That's what it is. It's separating layers are these interstitial layers, and they have balls in them that are, that those. That's what we saw. All the stuff erodes away because it's watery and gooey and collagen and weak stuff, and the balls remain. That's what we just saw. And here's Gill and I discovered this 2013, 2014. Here it is, right here. Interstitial new discovery in human body after it's previously missed by scientists, and this is uh, from 2018. Okay, the moon is rusting. Well, guess what? Everything in the universe is rusting because there is iron in literally everything that I can find. And I think I have demonstrated that quite well. And if NASA is interested, I would like to help them identify their rocks. 